excellence, a defining standard, a pursuit of the passionate, the pinnacle of our ambitions marked by unparalleled outcomes and best-in-class quality. From the highest castles to some of the most esteemed products and services, one small group of island nations has forged a legacy of excellence that resonates far beyond its shores. This is the United Kingdom. A country whose size belies its achievements, where towering aspirations fuel an unwavering commitment to producing premium results and have set a global standard for greatness. Here, we'll find that the powerful winds of innovation have converged with local customs, values, and ways of living to create something unique. Together, we'll see firsthand how technology and tradition combine to form cloud cultures. Excellence is an ideal we all strive for. It drives our decision-making, fuels innovation, and propels us to exceed not only our own expectations, but also the demands of an ever-evolving industry. Which leads me to wonder, what defines it? What distinguishes exceptional from ordinary? And perhaps most crucially, how has one country managed to be so successful in their pursuit of it? Which brings us here to the United Kingdom, where high standards are more than a luxury, their way of life. To help me discover how UK innovation continually stands out, I've enlisted the help of some friends from our Microsoft UK offices. Lizzie Donachie, a product marketing director, and Quadwo, or Kojo Benko, a digital lead. When it comes to an enduring legacy of precision, performance, and prestige, one name stands above the rest. Rolls-Royce engines began producing its first aero engines at the onset of World War I, and ever since has been on an upward trajectory in innovation. As Lizzie will soon discover, that's in large part due to the exacting standards and dedication to excellence that is synonymous with their name. I wonder if you could explain to me a little bit about Rolls-Royce. Obviously, everyone knows the brand. Can you tell me a bit about your bit of the business specifically? Rolls-Royce Civil Aerospace provide the engines for wide-body planes, and also for some of the best and fastest business jets in the world. So if you're trying to get somewhere really quickly, you can rely upon us. I joined Rolls-Royce about four years ago, and we were introducing the latest generation of, of new engine technology. The new engines were gonna generate huge amounts of data, and we needed to re-architect our platform to be able to cope with that increase. What's the sort of data that gets produced by each engine? So each engine generates about half a gig of data per flight, and there's multiple engines on a plane. We're looking at vibrations, we're looking at temperatures, we're looking at lots of different things that give us an indication of the health of the engine and allow us to respond if we see something that we can either help the pilot or we can help the maintenance staff when the plane lands. We spoke before about actually the need for the quality of the engines. Can you talk a little bit about why that's a, such an important principle for Rolls-Royce? We work in a, in a world where the smallest tolerances are incredibly important. So today we're capturing a lot of data from the machines that we make these parts with. That's really important because if there's a defect in the process, then it's better to find it early, scrap that part or recycle that part and start again and, and move forward. Rolls-Royce is a global company, got a big presence here in the UK. Can you tell me a little bit about what that means to you and kind of how you see that translate in what you do? For British engineering, obviously, excellence is something that comes to mind. And there's something about wanting to do the simplest thing is, is a real part of our character. I kind of have this phrase either verbally or in my head, which is, let's always find a better way. There must be a better way of, of achieving what we want to do. It's about learning, and I really think the elasticity of the cloud, the instant nature of being able to utilize it, are really helpful in, in that kind of exploration. And I think that's really important for the future. Even a company as heralded as Rolls-Royce Engines experiences that same persistent itch, that nagging awareness that the things we create can always be better, more refined, more remarkable. 
And it's this commitment to continuous improvement paired with the right data that is elevating them to ever greater heights. Shakespeare famously wrote, it is not in the stars to hold our destiny, but in ourselves. Here at the beating heart of finance, empires rise and fall, fortunes are minted, and the London Stock Exchange Group has taken the reins of their destiny with an unlikely character in the role of chief information officer. No, not Cassius, a Yankee. Tony, it's really great to get the opportunity to talk with you today. I'd love to hear a little bit more about the London Stock Exchange Group, what it is, what you do, and what it means to you. We do a lot of things here. I think yeah. uh, the, the name might suggest we're an exchange with people screaming orders and stuff. That is what I think. Of. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and uh, not that traditional exchange. But we also have a big post-trade business. We're a big clearing organization. We are there to make sure that uh, if anything happens in terms of a major default, that we have protected the industry from a big issue. We are a source of capital, and we have a big data analytics business, providing so many industries with critical data for them to run their businesses. And certainly the analytics to be able to help people make decisions. Right? Yeah. And it's uh, really yeah. critical. At speed, giving them that information to be able to make those uh, decisions. And of course, you know what, what people want from us is uh, they want to make sure that it's always there, always ready, right. uh, always available. So this whole notion of resilience it's a culture that, that we need to, to, to establish. You play such a critical role as part of the delivery of that quality, that excellence, that resilience for so many companies around the world. And the work around innovation is also probably deeply rooted in that focus on resilience. Well, what's interesting is if you look at our tech journey, we spent a lot of time in the last few years bringing the people and the systems and the customers together with what was the, the London Stock Exchange into one more integrated company. And that focus has been around integration, it's been around getting the platforms, getting a foundation in place, modernizing a number of the areas with a very clear goal that that's a foundation for transformation. Tony, tell me a little bit about how cloud and cloud innovation has really changed the way you, the way the company works. I'm always asked to optimize to three things that are working against each other, right? right? Speed to market, cost efficiency and quality. Yep. Right. And if you optimize to one, it's always at the expense of, the, of other the other two. That's right. And so you're constantly tugging on these. The cloud actually allows us to optimize on all three. Mm. Not immediately and not without work. Right. But it does allow that. Right. Now let me ask you a really important question, Tony. <laughs> I have, uh, in my travels, gotten to eat food from all over Europe. Being an American here in the UK, what is your favorite dish? What is your favorite type of food here in the UK? Turkish. Oh, really? Yeah. And certainly um, <laughs> here in, in England, um, it's in abundance and it's That's phenomenal. Right. And so they do it well. They do it well. That's right. Tony, thank you so much. And uh, I look forward to grabbing a Turkish bite with you at some point. It's been my pleasure and I will happily take you to a Turkish all restaurant right. anytime. The London Stock Exchange Group has distinguished itself through its relationships. Clients rely on them to navigate the unpredictable currents of the market. And in an industry where even the slightest edge can lead to substantial margins, they found theirs using the cloud to deliver insights and solutions at speed. A short train ride away, Quadro is in Windsor to uncover how noble aspirations and opportune circumstances empowered vCreate to keep families connected when it matters most. Can you tell me just a little bit about vCreate? Sure, vCreate is a secure clinical video service used as a tool to keep families connected when uh, they have a relative in hospital. And also it's used as a sort of clinical tool to enable families to send videos into to their doctor as a tool for diagnostics. Oh, wow. How did the idea come about? We had a, uh, a video platform uh, for the private sector mainly. Oh, wow. And that was going quite, quite well. And then we got a, uh, an email out of the blue from a neonatologist oh. in Glasgow. He said, I've got um, a, a dad on my unit who's got, who's got a, a baby in the, in the neonatal intensive care mm. unit and he is a car mechanic. And when customers bring their cars in to be serviced, they do a little video. And uh, so he said, why can't I get a video of my baby. We had a great conversation about it and I just thought, why is no one doing yeah, this yeah, already? Yeah. So we gave them an instance and then it launched and everyone loved it. It went from that one unit in Glasgow, then the other ones in Scotland and then England. So and then before, we, yeah, before we knew it, it was a thing. 
and then up to this day, there's now been 75,000 uh, oh, families who've sent and, and received over three quarters of a million videos. Yeah. It's insane. So the beginning takes place before COVID and then COVID happens. So yeah. how, how was that transition? You know, COVID was obviously such a devastating time for, mm. for the world. And um, I think that we were just, we had the right technology at the right time. Yeah. In September 2019, we made the decisions to move to the cloud. And then obviously with, with, with COVID, we got very busy very quickly, but fortunately yeah. we had the infrastructure in place. I think we would have really struggled to have scaled up at the speed that we would yeah. have needed to. And that would have meant that, you know, a lot of families would have missed out. I think in the UK, we're really proud of our healthcare system. So being able to impact that in a great way is fantastic. It's a very unique system we have here in the UK. Mm -hmm. It's a very specific culture and there are regulations across even some of these sort of devolved nations in the UK as well. We wanted to make sure that actually every unit, which would then equate to any parent in the country, mm -hmm. you know, would have equitable access, but then also that the technology was easily deployed and no barriers That's to nice. entry. Yeah. So we are mainly in the UK, mm -hmm. but we do have a sort of scattering of units across the world in the US, Canada, Australia, and some in Europe. There are lots of different regulatory rules across the world with data residencies. So uh, being able to spin up servers and resources in these different regions virtually immediately is incredible. And what that allows us to do as well is that everyone gets the same experience. Mm. So the system runs exactly the same way as it does in Windsor yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 than it does in, in Melbourne, Australia. So this speaks to the testament of how quality the product is being so easily adopted and scaled around the world. Thank you. Thank you very much. Vcreate has had a remarkable journey. They saw a need, and they had the technology, capability, and infrastructure to meet it. And by harnessing the power of the cloud to scale, they could trust every family would have an experience that lived up to their high standards. Over the course of our conversations here in the UK, I've started to pick up on a common thread, that data is the key to unlocking excellence. So I'm on my way across town to talk with a company that specializes in it, KX Systems. Hey Ashok, it's really awesome to be here and uh, I'm excited about our fantastic meal in front of us uh, in this wonderful pub. Tell me a little bit about KX. KX is all about helping, especially the data-driven companies, yeah. to kind of get to the answers at the speed of thought. Most people will start with questions and try to figure out the answers, but you need to kind of look at the vast amount of data and how do you actually answer the questions based on what you observe. I've been talking with a lot of partners and uh, really focusing on sort of the importance of innovation and specifically the importance of innovation when it comes to culture. You know, what do you love about the UK and what sort of makes you excited about running a company here uh, in the UK? I was asking somebody the other day, what's the national dish of UK, right? <laughs> it's not fish and chips. Is it not fish and chips? It's chicken tikka masala. Oh, is that right? It is. Okay, it is. okay, <laughs> fantastic. Okay. Chicken tikka masala was invented here because people, <laughs> uh, I don't know if you knew that. So I did not know that. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Okay. So, what I like about here is that it's really a global city. People come from different parts of the world and you're focused on the issue, the culture, the collaboration, the innovation which happens. We talk about data, you know, how you want to democratize data decision yep. making. Yeah. So it's the same thing with chicken tikka masala. Now they've democratized it so that every culture, you know, everybody eats it. Now, right? so how do you democratize? How do you get you know, data literacy? And how do you, everybody uses the same without biases? Even just connecting it back to the overall sort of uh, cultural things that I've learned while here is that, that strive for excellence can also mean taking that diversity, taking that collaboration from other locations and bringing it together. It's not about technology alone. It's really how to people build agility and the quality into it. You know, obviously we've uh, all gone through some tough times over the last few years. You know, how important was that focus on quality, focus on improving to carry through some of the tough times here in the UK? Yeah, but I think, you know, when you look at now with what's happening with Brexit and, you know, the type of things where people have to focus on the cost with inflation being high, I think there's a lot more focus on how do I improve efficiency? And, you know, you don't want to give up something because you're improving some of this thing, cutting costs versus this is where I think you focus more on doing the right things. Yes. It's not about doing more for less. Uh -huh. It's doing the right things in the first place. So yes. it's effectiveness, not efficiency. Ashok raises an intriguing point. There is an important distinction between efficiency and effectiveness. Operating efficiently is undeniably important, but it doesn't guarantee exceptional results. However, aligning our actions with meaningful outcomes, that can be a differentiating factor. With so much going on, I barely had enough time to make my flight. 
So I'll be reconnecting with Lizzie and Kojo remotely. Hi, Corey. Hi, Corey. So I didn't get a chance to meet with you guys in person when I was there in the UK, but uh, great to connect again. So Lizzie, tell me a little bit about uh, your meeting with Rolls-Royce Engines. Met Stuart, it was really good. We spoke a little bit about some of the challenges of being in a business that creates data when the engines are in the air. That's really, really cool. And Koji, you got the chance to meet with Vcreate. Tell me a little bit more about that. There's a healthcare company and they developed, you know, video technology that connects patients with families. The idea came from a parent who was asking for a secure way to sort of check on this child who was in the neonatal unit. So that sort of birthed this idea. An amazing story. I love that. And did either of those conversations have anything to do with food? Was there food involved in those conversations? Um, we had really good coffee. Okay, good. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's a positive. I got the chance to talk with Ashok from KX, uh, and we got to talk about the focus on how quality as sort of a, a way of life for the UK. And then I also got the chance to meet with the London Stock Exchange Group and really talk about, again, their focus on quality and, and how important it was to their end customers. Um, and, uh, and there it was really, Tony had offered me a Turkish dinner the next time I'm back. So again, food was really a, a central theme for me well, thank you guys so much. It's been really awesome to get the chance to meet and work with both of you and learn more about uh, your country and all of the exciting work being done there. Thanks thank for you coming. For us. Yes. All right. Bye bye. What we've discovered here in the UK has been nothing short of brilliant. The cloud culture here has shown us that excellence is more than just an outcome. It's a mindset that permeates every aspect of our work. And while achieving it is always desirable, it's the pursuit that matters most. Once again, the UK's most famous playwright put it best, be great in act as you have been in thought. Armed with modern technology, we are all capable of setting a standard that inspires greatness. I've had a great time here in the UK, but I have another stop to make. And it's looking like it's going to be an experience I won't be forgetting anytime soon. See you in Italy.